Euzubillahimineşşeytanirracim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin, ve salatu ve selamu aşrafil mursaleyin Seyyidina ve Mevlana Muhammeden Mustafa sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem. Bimmen edekum min nezarifu ziyya ya Resulü Kerim, Habibun Azim. Mati Allah ati ya Resulü ulil amri minkum. Remind always from myself and I have the kul ajisu da'if ve miskin zalim ve cahil. By the grace of Allah azzawajal that we are still in existence. İnşallah for the tafakkur on the question and answers. Sayyidi, what is the minimum amount of awrad we can do when we are extremely busy or tired? The minimum? The minimum. <laughs> Actually if you if you do the awrad consistent, the beginning of the awrad before you get to the, the Allah and the salawats, that the three shahada, seven istighfar. That one if you have that memorized Surat Al-Ikhlas, Surat Al-Nas, Surat al Insha, if you have that memorized it doesn't take more than 20 minutes. So that has to be done, then the du'a has to be made and sealed. Then the zikr of Allah and the durud al-sharit salawat on Prophet can be split. That you can do on your way to work, your 1500 zikr of Allah Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, you do the minimum. Not the 5,000, 5,000 but to admit that we're weak servants and 1,500. And I do 1,500 Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah, Allah on the way to work. And then with the discipline I'm going to do my 300 or 500 salawats on the way coming back. And it's a matter of time management like everything else in life. That if you manage the time and have a discipline in which you write it and religiously stick to it that I'm going to do this at this time. It should never be something difficult. If you don't have that discipline and then you just say, well I'll just wait, wait, wait and then everything at the end of the night trying to do it right before you fall asleep, then you begin to pass it and miss it. So you can do the beginning part before you leave the house up to the ida and the du'a and then the zikr of Allah and the salawat on Prophet split it. But that, that shouldn't be left out inshaAllah. We talked about before that you know that people are paying into their home and thinking their home is going to protect them. And when we first came here we described that a day is coming of immense difficulty that people won't imagine what type of difficulties but they'll begin to test you. And they test you in your faith and your istiqam, firmness in your belief that you could be sitting in a home and begin to hear scratching coming from everywhere. Where you think the house is under attack from rodents, from raccoons, from creatures. And you begin to panic and begin to have fear. That box that you live in is not as secure as you think it is without the barakah of Allah's nazar, Prophet's nazar and the nazar of awliyaullah. That you begin to hear scratching and noises and you feel like the house something going to be coming in to eat you. And they begin to test on your faith. That why do you believe like that? Make your du'as, make your salawats, make your zikrs, make your tafakkur and, and your meditation asking Allah to push away, push away. For you may think it's a rodent but it could be spiritual beings playing with you by permission of Allah to test you. Because a day coming where wherever you are they may be screaming outside the door that they're trying to get in. Nowhere will be safe except by Allah's permission. If your faith is firm at that time and you know that you're good and your hisab is good with Allah then alhamdulillah nothing. And that was in Surah Tawbah verse 51, For verily nothing can happen to me that it's not written in Allah's book and Allah is my Mawlana, Allah is my protector and Allah is the best of those to protect His mu'mineen. But did it mean that you reach to be a mu'min, you merely accepted Islam? Means that these ayat al kareem will begin to come alive with power for the believer. That based on that verse they'll have a power in which nothing is approaching them that Allah's hand is firmly above them. 
But that requires sincerity, that requires a faith in which you, you, you put your faith and you put your faith to be real. What you have is real, you should be preparing for it. If you're preparing to pay off your home and you think your home is going to protect you, good luck with that. But if you believe your faith is true and you want the attention of Sayyidina Muhammad you want to do your dawah, you want to do all these things to get the nazar and the attention of Sayyidina Muhammad that's what's important in our life. That's why when you follow these awliyaullah they lead by example. They're not sitting at home just playing, and they could play video games too and just sit at home. But they're continuously moving, moving, moving to the point of exhaustion. And when people look at them they say, Shaykh you look like you're going to be dead. That's the picture he saved on the video. <laughs> the beginning of our journey was nice, we were all fresh and hello we're leaving. By the end of the journey we didn't <laughs> even broadcast it. It was 10 kilometers a day of intense walking. Why do they do things like that? Why do they continuously go, continuously do events, continuously do because they want the nazar and the barak of Sayyidina Muhammad's nazar upon them, the Prophet happy with what I gave you, you are using it in that way to save souls, to do your dawah, to be of service and khidmat. That's the whole purpose of our life, my whole life was to be of service. If what Allah gave me of knowledge and I dispensed it, what Allah gave me an understanding of character and I dispensed it. Not to take what Allah gave to you and sit upon it, but to give, to give and to be of service. If what you have sitting in your bank could be opening a center and people be coming and saving lives, what do you think going to save you? Your bank account or the fact that you opened up a center and the people are sitting on a carpet doing zikr from your generosity? People don't seem to have an understanding of what, what are they, they pay more towards their car than towards their faith. So this is the day that we live in. But turn on the news and you see what's happening all around and things are coming in very fast and very difficult now. InshaAllah Allah nazar be upon us and the rahmah of Prophet's nazar be upon us inshaAllah and the support of only Allah fi samahi wa fil ard be upon us inshaAllah. Next question. <coughs> Kindly request Shaykh to help us with some secrets to lower our ego voice during meditation and hear the voice of higher presence and light our hearts so we remain most humble. Uh, we just gave that advice <laughs> before you asked it. The hardest advice is to be of service and to give from what Allah gave you because you worship that. That's the hardest thing to pull from you like teeth. What Allah gave to you they're going to pull it. Khud'um walihum we have on the wall as the qibla. Take from them and pray from them. Allah didn't ask, ask from them because He knows they're not going to give. So when they take it's going to be a big enemy against your nafs. As soon as you support, as soon as you give and you give and you give and you give until it hurts that you're attacking your nafs. If you have a service and you have a time, give your time. If you have rizq and sustenance, give your rizq and sustenance. If you have aql and ability, give it and be of service until it hurts. That is what is the fastest defeat of your nafs because it's most against that. What, what can you give to your nafs? Like a shower? That's not going to do anything. But what's real and what it truly hates is that. It hates to be of service. It only wants to serve itself in shaitan. So then when you enrolled and you gave and you gave and you did and you did, your foot is locked onto that shaykh. Because where are you going to go after all that? You're going to re-establish yourself somewhere else? It's like pay your whole Harvard tuition and say, now nah, I'm quitting. No, nobody does that unless your parents paid for it you didn't care. But if you, <laughs> you did it yourself with your blood, your sweat and your tears, you enrolled in that and you supported that, you're locked onto their feet, you're not going anywhere. And that brings the fight of the nafs down, that brings like a flame upon the nafs. Everything that you gave and every, every action of khidmat is a fire against the nafs. 
And that's what brings the nafs down, that's what brings the naf in, nafs into control because you're locked on to that reality, you're locked on to the shaykhs, you're locked on to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad you're committed to it. And that's what brings that, that ego down so that you can do your practices and do all the zikrs that you have to do. If the nafs is wild it becomes Im impossible to do anything. Every time you want to sit it's all over the place. And take a path of humility that keep silent when people talk. When somebody fighting with you keep silent, answer and don't answer back. Put a lollipop in your mouth. We said a rock but people may swallow it and then get in, in trouble. So kinder gentle is just put a lollipop in your mouth and don't answer back to people so that you can come against yourself. You don't have to vindicate yourself, Allah will vindicate you inshaAllah. Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi, how to wake up for Fajr prayer and tafakkur regularly? Very difficult, we are struggling with discipline and irregular timings, please help us. <laughs> I think it's the same person who's always asking that. <laughs> Shall I drink a lot of water before you sleep, it's not <laughs> difficult. Just train yourself not to sleep deep. Put a big pitcher of water and drink that water before you sleep and you have to wake up every few hours to wash. And you train yourself to wake up, wash and go back to bed, wake up, wash and go to back to bed so that the sleep is not so deep that you're completely knocked out. And before you know it one of those times you have to get up is going to be your fajr time then you get up, wash and pray your Salatul Fajr. But discipline yourself not to have a very deep sleep, inshaAllah. So if we are being regular with our meditation, um, should we continue or is there a next step? Uh, no, you should go to be irregular with the meditation. <laughs> now of course we have to be regular with the meditation and keep meditating and keep reaching a state in which you are nothing. Say that I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing and that you visualize the energy and the dress of the shaykhs to be present. As much as you find yourself to be present, as much as you're away from that reality. So it means there is a way in which to say, I'm nothing and I'm visualizing that I'm in the dress of their light and asking their light to dress me. If I can keep that and understand that and begin to feel that qudra, that power and that energy begin to come. So it becomes very real that they have to feel the energy and feel that presence and that dress upon them inshaAllah. You, you're having an association within our association. Those are the meditation question, there's an energy question. Uh, a couple of people were asking, they're, they're healthy but they notice every time they're around a few people they start losing their energy or they have very sharp headaches. Oh that's good. Then you understand the reality of energy, that we are a very powerful energy being. As soon as you build your energy or if Allah given to you an energy, you're like a light bulb. Wherever you go the positive will always pull the negative. So it means a positive force by its nature will attract the negative force. So every movement that you have as a positive force <coughs> of your faith and practices it begins to attract all the negativity and that's why then the importance of all of the usul and everything that Prophet brought for us was for the perfection of energy. Means that keep your wudu at all times. Wudu is not for only for salah, wudu is to be at all times, never to be outside of your wudu. As soon as you lose your wudu you've lost your energy force field and you can come under severe attack especially if your, your progress is high. So that wudu is like a shield. The sunnah of Prophet ring is again another shield that they have a turquoise ring as a way of protection against bad eye. And you see many times if they wear turquoise it will crack because of the nazar of people and other people are energy forces. When they have an envy and a desire that they can't control their eyes send out. So then the sunnah ring of Prophet had a power keeping the head covered from all sorts of negativity and energies that are coming upon the head. 
Everything that Prophet brought for us was like a shield for a warrior that protect them against negative energy. So when they go out and they feel that negativity then they go home and they wash and they try to wash away all the negativity of where they were and they begin to manage where they go unnecessarily they don't go places where their energy will be pulled. And when they go out they try to keep their nazal bal qadam, their eyes upon their qadam. Because as soon as you put your eyes up the window to your soul are your eyes and every type of devil and, and arrow will be shot into the eyes in which the eyes become red again from all the negative energies that are all around. So then they become experts in energy, how to preserve their energy, how to safeguard their, their qadam, their way in which not to be affected. And by the end result of the energy they pick up throughout their work and all their actions they go home and they shower. As soon as they enter into the shower it's like a meditation for them. They ask Allah that through the power of my, when Allah said, my throne is upon this my, Ya Rabbi by the power of this water and the secret that you have within it, wash away my difficulties. And that ghusl and that wash, it washes away the sins and difficulties and the burdens of insan inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.